Now what we're going to be doing is we're actually going to be doing some work. We're going to be doing double integration in polar. And so we're going to start out with some of the theory, the theory about how it is that we actually find um, or that we work and find these integrals. And then we'll get into some of the more practical aspects, which is basically how do we um, uh, parametrize uh, into polar, just kind of review that a little bit, and then how do we utilize that in order to do these double integrals. So we're going to start out, we're going to, if you remember in rectangular, we're always going to be integrating over rectangular, we've got rectangular regions, or we could have general regions in rectangular, okay? So we imagine, here's our rectangular region, we've got delta x here, and we got delta y here, okay? And so then we have, you know, basically what we, we did was we picked a point, and we you know, figured out the area of the square or the area of the rectangle. And then we multiplied that by this point, which was like F of, call it XI star, YI star. Okay. And we just did that for all these different rectangles that we had. And then that actually ended up giving us the integral. Well, now what we're doing is we're working, we're going to have the similar, similar process, but what we're going to be doing is we're going to be working instead, instead of polar, which means that our rectangles are going to look different. They're not actually going to be rectangles. They're in fact going to be circular regions. So let's imagine, we'll just take for the sake of our, our, our work, we're going to let R be the set of R, R theta, okay, such that we get theta is greater than or equal to A, less than or equal to, or alpha, less than or equal to beta, and we have R is greater than or equal to A, less than or equal to B. Right? So we've got a circular region, maybe it looks something like this. And then this region gets broken up into smaller sub-rectangles. Smaller sub-rectangles, right, just along this value for delta theta. Okay? Okay? Now, I'm going to take one of these rectangles and I'm going to take a look at it. Let's take, for example, this rectangle right here. So if I take this rectangle, I kind of move it out, what I'm going to get is something that looks like this. Right, looks like that, and the the what we got here is we basically got a um, something that looks kind of like a, a trapezoid, right? So it kind of looks like a trapezoid, and so if we know what this length right here is, and we know what this length is right here, it's one half that length, and then times right whatever this is going to be right here, okay? And that kind of or like times the height. If you kind of think about it, that that kind of works. I mean, like that's basically the idea, okay? So what we want to remember here is we've got that S. Oh, actually, I should also say that once those trapezoids, once these kind of regions get small enough, they might as well be trapezoids. They really are trapezoids. And so we can utilize that and have it be an estimate. And as we take, you know, essentially um, I and J going to infinity, what we end up getting is we end up getting things that give us the exact number. So it really isn't going to make that much of a difference. So we want to remember that our arc length S is going to equal R theta. So the arc length here is going to be equal to R theta. Okay. And so if you kind of think about that, that's actually going to end up being this thing right in here. Okay. That's your R theta because that essentially is your, your arc length or it's this length right here. That's going to be R theta. Okay, and what that is, if you think about this, we've cut out a piece, a little portion here. Okay, so this size here, that's delta theta, is that is that amount of uh, rotation, and then this thing here, that ends up becoming, uh, that's end up ends up being delta r. That's the change in r. Okay. So my arc length here s is going to equal delta r times delta theta. Okay, now this length right here, we'll call this, we'll let this be ri minus one, and this is going to be ri, okay? And basically all those r's, they're just points, right? They're just points along this ray. So we've got this ray that's made up of, that's a, a radius, it's a radius length, and so we've broken it up into delta r pieces, right, like we normally have, and then what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, well, then this is the ri minus one and this is the ri piece, okay? So our trapezoid is going to be one half ri minus one plus ri times 
times delta r delta theta. Okay, delta r delta theta, and that pretty much gives me the size of the trapezoid. What I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to substitute. I'm going to let one half r i minus one plus r i equal. We'll call this r i j star. And so basically, if you kind of think about what that is, that's a lot like, um, it, it's basically going to be kind of a midpoint. We did a lot of that instead of uh, single variable calculus. We basically made the substitution. And so my delta A, my area of that region, delta A, is going to equal Rij star delta R delta theta. Okay, so that's delta A. Okay. So... We kind of got, that sets us up for our delta A. And now it's going to look a lot like the work that we do with rectangular regions. So we've got our figure here, right? And what we're going to do is we're going to set this up. We're going to go, okay, well, what's the volume? Approximately, what's the volume for this region right here? Well, it's the area, or in this case, delta A, times whatever the height is, whatever the value of the function is, really. Okay? So we're going to say, well, the function... We're going to represent that as f of r i j star comma theta i j star. Okay, so that's the associated theta. And that'll be times delta a. All right, and that's equal to the volume. Right? This is essentially your height. Here's your area. Okay, and there we go. And so if we rewrite this, this is going to be f of r i j star theta i j star times r i j star delta r delta theta. All right. Now, if you remember the kind of the work that we've been doing or that you've been doing with integrals, you've seen that you're like, okay, I kind of remember this from calculus. What we do here is we take this, we summate this. Okay, we're going to take a double sum, all right? And so this double sum is going to go from i equals 1 up to m, and j equals 1 up to n, all right? f of r i j star theta i j star, okay? r i j star delta r delta theta. Okay, so, and we should kind of define what this means. Um, what it, What's M, what's N, okay? Uh, basically, M and N are the number of regions, right? So the number of, of regions. And this is going to be the number of regions for theta. And this will be the number of regions for... For R doesn't really matter because we're actually going to take those li limits as those limits go to infinity all right so we're actually going to like make m really big n really big okay and then make these regions smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller get better and better and better approximations like we normally do okay all right so what do we do then that means that we're going to take this limit we're going to take the limit as m n goes to infinity infinity okay and let's call this um nah let me write it out uh, the sum i equals 1 up to m, j equals 1 up to n, f of r i j star theta i j star r i j star delta r delta theta. Okay? Now, to kind of help us to expand our understanding of integrals, what this means, this actually gives me the integral. Each one of these summations represents a single integral. So the first one is going to be an integral. We'll call this from A to B. Okay. And then the second one is going to be, excuse me, the R one is going to go in, uh, the R goes inside. So A to B, and this is going to be alpha to beta. Okay. And this will be F of R theta. Remember Rij just becomes an R. Delta R is dr and then d theta. And that's the order that we utilize right for this uh, for this um, for this double integral okay so basically we're doing kind of the same thing the thing about it though is is that we get a kind of like a we get to have a different looking figure and so consequently we get a different um, equation for the area 
whatever we got, right, we're just taking, right, lots and lots and lots of areas and we're calculating the value of the function over lots and lots and lots of areas, okay? And then that ends up giving me the volume as I increase the number of cuts, right, as I make each one of these area pieces smaller, what I get is I get a better, better approximation, take that to infinity, and what I end up getting is the double integral, okay? So that's kind of like a really powerful way of thinking about this. Now let's go in and talk about sketching polar regions, all right? And then we're gonna talk about parametrizing things and that's gonna help us out a lot in terms of understanding how to work with um, double integrals and polar. So let's say, for example, I do have this rectangular region or this polar region R equal to R theta, okay? And it's gonna have constant values for R, R less than or equal to one, less than or equal to three, zero, less than or equal to theta, less than or equal to pi, okay? Now, this is gonna be the equivalent of getting just a straight rectangular region when we're working in double integrals over rectangles or with rectangular coordinate systems. It's the equivalent, okay? So it's kind of like our basic way of thinking about or doing a definite integral when we're doing double integrals. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, okay, well, I'm gonna draw a picture of this. Here's my uh, xy plane, but it's gonna be written in polar. And so what I've got here, I'm gonna go from zero to theta, and I'm gonna have, here's one, here's three. Okay, one, two, three, okay? And those are gonna be, that's my radii. So I'm gonna go between one and three. One and three right there, okay? And basically everywhere I go on this curve, it's gonna be between one and three. All right? So the first value, okay, we're gonna go from zero to pi. So that's zero to pi in terms of radians. So that's gonna go from x-axis positive to x-axis negative, all right? And then we're gonna do that for r equals three as well, okay? Notice this length right here is r equals three. That's, um, that's a radius, that's a radius of three. So our region is going to be this whole region right in here. Okay, so that's kind of like what we're gonna be doing when we actually sketch the regions. And so if I do, um, if I, when I go and do the integrals, I'm actually gonna sketch these regions. Okay, kind of help us to understand what exactly is happening. Okay. So as a reminder, what we also wanna be able to do is we need to be able to convert to polar because sometimes our figures are going to be written in rectangular. Oftentimes polar is just way easier to work with, way easier to do work with. So remember that X is gonna be equal to R cosine theta and that Y is gonna equal R sine theta. Okay. And we also know that r, um, r is gonna equal the square root of x squared plus y squared, okay? And that um, y over x, it ends up equaling tan theta. So for example, let's say for example, I have um, y, uh, f of x, y equals three x. Well, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna substitute in r cosine theta. So this means that f of r theta will equal three r cosine theta. And that's our, our, our shift. So now let's consider a, a problem. Let's say we wanna find the double integral and we have three x dA and we're gonna define our rectangular region r, or not a rectangular region, our polar region as r theta, one less than or equal to r less than or equal to two, zero less than or equal to theta less than or equal to pi. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna say, okay, well, let's first, um, we'll define 3x in polar, and we know that that's gonna be f of r theta, and that'll equal then um, three r cosine theta. I saw that one, that was the last one we did. Now I wanna actually define my region and I wanna look at my regions just to kinda of help me visualize the problem because it's gonna end up being really handy later on. So I draw my region and I'm gonna go, my r is gonna go from one to two and my theta is gonna go from zero to pi. So here's, here's zero, here's pi, one, the radius of one, 
radius of two. Okay, so this is the region that I'm actually going to be integrating along or integrating over. Remember that dA is gonna equal r dr d theta. That's gonna end up being my dA, okay? So there's a difference here between um, what we saw in terms of the the the, the um, rectangular rectangular and what we have in polar. In polar, it's r dr theta. So now we've got the we're going to take a double integral. Okay. Notice that dr is on the inside. We have to continue to do that. So that means we're going to go from one to two, and that theta is on the outside. So it's going to go from zero to pi. And that's just conventional, actually. Uh, frequently, what we're going to have is we're going to do dr first, and then we're going to integrate with respect to theta second. So this is now 3r cosine theta, r dr d theta. So now we'll get the integral from 0 to pi, integral from 1 to 2, 3r squared, cosine theta, dr d theta. And now what we need to do is we need to notice, okay, so I'm going to integrate with respect to r first, just like we did before. So if I integrate with respect to r first, I'm going to treat theta as a, um, as a constant. So this then means that this is going to be 3 over 3 r cubed cosine theta evaluated from 1 to 2. And then we're going to integrate that from 0 to pi d theta. This is then going to equal, notice this is r 1 and this is just going to be r cubed. So this is going to be, well, we'll pull out the cosine theta. So I got zero to pi cosine theta. And then the r cubed, it's going to be one to two. That's going to be two cubed minus one cubed d theta. So that's equal to, and that'll be seven. Seven times the integral from zero to pi of cosine theta d theta. So that ends up being equal to seven sine theta evaluated from zero to pi. All right, or actually we don't have an issue. We go in, we integrate from zero to pi now. Well, that gives me seven times, and this will be zero minus zero, which just ends up being zero. So this ends up being pretty interesting. Now, what makes it interesting is, is that our region obviously is not a region of area zero, but it turns out that our volume is, which probably means that we have some of our volume above the um, x-axis, some of the volume below the x-axis, right? And if you kind of think about it, it's cosine, and cosine, right, that, uh, that, that region is going to have, uh, it's actually an even function. And so as we go from zero to pi, right, we're going to go from one to zero, and then we're going to go negative and we're going to go from zero to one so it seems to make some sense there too all right okay all right let's take a look at this let's evaluate the integral over r of one minus x squared minus y squared da where r is the unit circle in the xy plane okay so we're going to actually think about this we want r our region to be the unit circle in the xy plane okay and so if i draw that There we go. If I draw that, right, okay, it's a circular region. And since it's a circular region, it's probably way easier to do in polar than it would be to actually go through and do this in, um, in rectangular, all right? So I'm thinking to myself, okay, what does the polar region look like? Well, it's gonna be R, it's gonna be the integral, okay? Or not integral, it's gonna be the region, R theta, such that and we'll have that r is going to be greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to 1, because we want everything that's within this, right? So our radiuses go from 0 to 1, and theta will then be from 0 to 2 pi. By the way, we can use the equal to on 2 pi because we're just going to integrate over um, a single point or line, and which doesn't change anything in terms of our volume. Okay, so we got that. There's our region right? Here's r equals zero. Here's r equals one. Okay. And then, right, we're going all the way around the unit circle. So that's going from zero back to two pi. And that's why our region looks the way that it does. Now what we need to do is we need to change this one minus x squared minus y squared. We need to change it into polar. And so I'm going to actually just notice something. I've got one minus, and this is going to be x squared plus y squared. 
And if I remember that this is actually equal to r squared. So this is going to end up being 1 minus r squared. And there we go. So that ends up being my function, my function f of r theta. Notice one of the things that actually made this a lot easier now too is we now only have a single variable. We are still going to have to integrate over two of them, but one of them is pretty much going to be constant. So we can set up our integral now. We'll set up our integral. We're going to have the r on the inside. So this is going to go from 0 to 1. The outside is going to be theta, 0 to 2 pi. And then I'm going to get 1 minus r squared and then r dr d theta. Don't forget that r. Okay, don't forget the r. All right. And so that's going to be the integral from 0 to 2 pi. The integral from 0 to 1, r minus r cubed dr d theta. So the hard part is just integrating r minus r cubed, which is not that hard. So we got the integral from 0 to 2 pi, and this is going to give me r squared over 2 minus r to the fourth over 4, evaluated from 0 to 1, and then this will be d theta. So this is going to then equal, well, we'll evaluate this. This is going to be 1 half minus 1 fourth. Okay, so it's 1 half minus 1 fourth. 0 to 2 pi d theta. And this is then going to equal the integral from, well, not, uh, it's going to just be 1 fourth the integral from 0 to 2 pi d theta, which is just 1 fourth theta evaluated from 0 to 2 pi. Plug that in, we end up with just 1 fourth times 2 pi, which equals pi over 2. Now I know it seemed like a long process, but I can guarantee you it was faster than trying to figure out how to do it with one minus x squared minus y squared. Because one minus x squared minus y squared, instead of being a region, a polar region, we would have actually had to find the equation for x and y, right? We'd actually have to figure out, like we'd probably go find half of it. We'd use x squared plus y squared, okay? And then we'd have to find our bounds, you'd actually have to figure out what that should be written in in rectangular. For our purposes, way easier to do that in polar. Just in general, any circular region is going to be way easier in polar. Okay? So, what do we do? We sketched our region, right? Sketching the region gave us our bounds. Then we had to transform our function into f of r theta. That is, is utilize our, um, our equalities in order to do that. Then it was just a matter of setting up our integration remembering r d r d theta, and then going through and integrating. Okay, so now what we wanna talk about is we're gonna integrate over general polar regions. So if you remember when we were doing double integration and we started out with that, what we did was we integrated over basically rectangles, and then we went from integrating over rectangles to integrating over regions that were not just rectangles, but were any kind of disk inside of, um, inside of the xy plane. Now we're gonna do something very, very similar. If you remember, what we did was we either had a type 1 region or we had a type 2 region. A type 1 region was we had um, y was a function of x, and a type 2 region was x was a function of y, and it just switched the bounds of our integration. Well, we're going to do kind of the same thing here, all right? Um, what we're going to do is we're going to have a function, we're going to have two functions, call it like a bottom function and a top function, where we have r is um, a function of theta, and then we have our bounds for theta, okay? So we have r as a function of theta and our bounds for theta. And then after that, it's just simply the same integration, same exact integration. The only difference is, is that we're gonna have like an inner function uh, of, uh, of theta and an outer function of theta. Inner function of theta, outer function of theta in order to like kind of define our regions. So let's take a look at an example because I think that'll actually help us out. So let's say, for example, we want to evaluate over the region D. Now notice this is a D as in disk. Um, uh, this region is no longer necessarily R rectangular, right? Okay, so we had the R represented the rectangular uh, regions. D now represents just a generalized region. And so this region is bounded by the polar axis and the upper half cardioid R equals one plus cosine theta, okay? So let's look at what this, what, what this is going to look like. Let's actually draw this picture out. And that's going to help us then to define our bounds. 
Okay. So we've got the polar axis. And when we talk about the polar axis, that's going to be the um, positive x axis, right? Okay, so here's the polar x axis, the polar axis, right? And actually, it's going to be the entirety here, right? And then the upper half of the cardioid. So this upper half of the cardioid is going to go, whoop, that's what that upper half of the cardioid looks like. So the region's going to be this region right here for that upper half of the cardioid. Now, if we look at one plus cosine theta, this right here, that's theta equals zero, okay? Because one plus cosine zero equals two, okay? And that's gonna be that region right here. We need this thing right there, that's gonna be at zero. So if we kind of think about what that would be, one plus cosine theta will equal zero, that means cosine theta has to equal negative one, okay? So theta is gonna equal, um, negative or theta is going to equal pi excuse me theta is going to equal pi all right so what we have here is that that's going to define the bounds for for theta so we're going to have our region d d our region is going to be the set r theta okay and now our the lower end of our region is going to be just zero right here r is going to equal zero it's going to be this re, that zero right there Okay, so R has got to be greater than or equal to zero. And then it's going to go out towards that upper cardioid. So the cardioid is going to end up becoming the, um, the upper bound for R. So that's one plus cosine theta. And then theta, as we said before, is going to be greater than or equal to zero and less than or equal to pi. So that's our region. Okay, we draw the cardioid. We're like, okay, it's gonna be this lower, that polar axis, which is gonna be basically essentially our x-axis, okay? And what we'll get is um, we wanna notice that we're gonna start at zero because we're going all the way down to the, the origin and then our upper bound is going to be that cardioid, okay? So our double integral is going to look like this. It's going to be zero to one plus cosine theta. Because remember, we're going to put r first, and then we'll have um, 0 to pi for our thetas. And then this is r squared sine theta r dr d theta. So now let's go and let's evaluate the integral. The integral, it's going to be 0 to pi. Okay. And then we're going to treat theta as a constant. So this is r cubed. So it's going to be r to the fourth over 4 evaluated from 0 to 1 plus cosine theta. All right, times sine theta, d theta. We'll plug that in. That's going to equal 1 plus cosine theta to the fourth, 0 to pi over 4 sine theta, d theta. So this is 1 fourth, 0 to pi, 1 plus cosine theta to the fourth, sine theta, d theta. Note that the derivative of cosine theta is negative sine theta. So we'll let u equal one plus cosine theta. So du is gonna equal then negative sine theta. This gives me then, um, if I figure out, I'll actually just change my bounds here. So this is gonna be u of zero equals two u of pi then is going to equal zero. So this is going to be one fourth the integral from zero to two or from two to zero, excuse me, negative one fourth, zero to two, right? Because we have that negative sine theta, negative du equals sine theta. And this will be u to the fourth du. This will give me then negative one fourth u to the fifth over five evaluated from zero to two, or two to, two to zero, excuse me, two to zero. So this is negative one twentieth, and this will be then um, zero to the fifth minus two to the fifth. 
So this ends up giving me positive 32 over 20. Or, what is that? 8 over 5. And there we go. Okay, so we went in, we said, okay, now I've got a general region. Okay, I need to know that the polar axis is going to be this bottom, bottom value, that, that uh, x-axis. Okay, we got the upper cardioid, we draw a picture of it. We want to consider what is R, R is like the inner curve, and notice this one doesn't really have one, so that's zero. And we'll go all the way out to R being the edge of the cardioid. And then we've got to define what theta is, and that, that's going to require us to actually kind of look at the, uh, at, at the polar pieces, and that's what I did right here, right? In order to figure out my bounds for theta, I went in and I figured out, right, there's two, this goes to zero, right? So what are the values in terms of theta that I'm going to need for that? Then I basically just went in and I said, okay, well now I'm going to um, solve the double integral just like I have done previously, previous, uh, previous second. Let's take a look at another example. This example now we're going to actually integrate over D of R squared sine squared two theta R D R D theta. For D equal to R theta, we'll go from theta greater than or equal to negative pi over four to pi over four, and R greater than or equal to zero less than or equal to two square root of cosine two theta. Okay, so what we're gonna do here we, we actually have the bounds for the integration already set up for ourselves, but let's kind of like just imagine what the region looks like anyways, because it's good practice. So what I'm going to notice is I'm going to go from negative pi over 4 to pi over 4. Okay, so if I take that and I take um, 2 cosine 2 theta, okay, um, that's 2 times the square root of cosine, okay, 2 times negative pi over 4. Okay, which equals two times the square root of, and this is gonna end up being, so that's negative pi over two, which ends up being zero, okay? So it goes equal to zero, all right? And then if I do the same thing with two times the square root of cosine two times pi over two, or pi over four, okay? That's also gonna be cosine pi over two, it's gonna go zero. So basically, I'm going to start at zero. I'm going to end at zero. Um, and so that's going to be, you know, my values. And so essentially, yeah, that, that's essentially what it's going to be. And then I know that um, it's going to reach its, its zenith, right? When theta equals zero. Okay, so at theta equals zero, then I get two cosine zero, essentially, or two times one, which equals two. So right there, there's two. And so what I'm kind of imagining is I mean, it's going to end up looking something like this, not a circle quite because it's square rooted, like closer as I get closer in towards, um, towards zero, it's going to get small and small, it's going to flatten out, but it's kind of looking something like that. And so here's my region. That's going to end up being my region that I'm going to integrate over. So I'm now, I've got to take my integral, set up my integral. I get the integral from my thetas are on the outside. So it's going to be negative pi over four pi over four, and I'll go from zero to two square root cosine two theta. And then this will be r squared sine squared two theta, r dr d theta. And so first I'm gonna integrate with respect to r, r dr d theta. And that's gonna end up giving me r to the fourth over four Evaluated from zero to two square root cosine two theta. And then we're gonna integrate that from negative pi over four to pi over four. And that'll be d theta. I'm gonna move this down just a little bit. So that integral, negative pi over four to pi over four, this is gonna be two square root cosine two theta to the fourth over four, okay, and then it'll be d, then d theta. So that'll then be, this is gonna be two to the fourth, which will end up being 16 over four. So this is gonna be four times the integral from negative pi over four to pi over four. Oh, I forgot the sine squared. So there's a sine squared two theta, sine squared two theta here, d theta. And this is then gonna be cosine squared two theta sine squared two theta 
d theta. And for the sake of speed and, and ease, when we go through and we actually go and uh, integrate this particular one, uh, you'd basically do a substitution, right? You'd uh, make this into a one minus cosine squared two theta, right? Go ahead and do some work there. And, but what essentially that would then be, when we actually go and figure it all out, we're gonna end up with pi over 16 times four. And so that ends up equaling pi over four. And that is the value for that particular integral. Okay, all right. So I, I didn't want to go through this. It's actually kind of a long and tedious process. Would have made for a much longer video. But essentially, you'll go, you'll do a trig substitution if you need to do this by hand. Um, I personally actually put it in a calculator in order to kind of speed things up for us. All right, so simply put, we give our bounds for R, second part of the double integral, bounds for theta, okay? And then, right, we'll evaluate, keeping theta constant, plug all that in, then we have just a function of just theta. And then all we need to do is con uh, um, integrate with respect to theta, and we're done. Now let's talk about finding volumes using polar. So let's imagine that I want to find the volume of a solid that lies under the paraboloid z equals 4 minus x squared minus y squared, and above the disk, x minus 1 y, uh, squared plus y squared equals 1 on the xy plane. Now what I'm thinking about here is I'm thinking to myself, well, you know, it's just finding a volume. And we found volumes before. That's essentially what we're doing whenever we're taking a double integral. Anytime we evaluate a double integral, we're essentially figuring out the volume if we're thinking about it in geometric terms. So consequently, all I'm gonna do here is I'm just going to find the volume. Now notice that in both cases, for the paraboloid and the disc, we have squared terms for both X and Y. That's really indicative that probably what I'm gonna to want to do is I'm gonna to wanna to change both into polar because it's gonna make things a lot easier to work with in polar, okay? And in the case of our paraboloid, we'll change our paraboloid into cylindrical, right? Which is basically polar, okay? But we'll just change it up into polar co coordinates um, which is our cylindrical, except for we still keep Z. Z is gonna end up being our F of R theta. So let's take um, Z equals four minus X squared minus Y squared, and let's change to polar. What I notice is that I'm gonna get Z equals four minus, and this will be X squared plus Y squared. And so that equals four minus R squared. And that is going to be our f of r theta. So f of r theta in this case is gonna equal four minus r squared. Now we've gotta look at our region, so our disk d. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take x minus one squared plus y squared equals one, okay? So that's gonna be a full disk, right? Or actually it's, it's, it's an ellipse, or excuse me, yeah, it's a disk uh, centered at one, one zero. And I'll expand it out, and that'll give me x squared minus two x plus um, plus one plus y squared equals one. And then this is gonna then give me x squared plus y squared, right, equals just two x when I subtract over the ones and I subtract over my two x. This is r squared, and then that's going to be two r cosine theta when we substitute in for x equals r cosine theta. So in this case, r could either equal zero or r, um, we could end up with r equal to two cosine theta, right? Just by dividing through by r. So we get r equals two cosine theta or r equals zero. So now that gives me my bounds. That gives me my, my region D. My region D is gonna be r theta. r is gonna be greater than or equal to zero, less than or equal to two cosine theta and theta is going to be greater than or equal to zero and less than or equal to two pi. Because we're looking at the entire circular region. Hmm. Actually, you know what? Scratch that, it's actually not gonna be two pi, it's just gonna end up being pi. And the reason why it's gonna end up being pi is because it's not actually centered at the origin. It's centered at the point one zero, okay? And so consequently, it's all going to be, um, and it's of radius one, so it's gonna all be within that positive region, okay? 
So if you think about it, that'll give me my full range of values, right, for, um, for cosine. It's going from zero to pi. All right, so now this is going to give me my, zero, my integral. My integral is going to go from zero to pi and zero to two cosine theta. Then I'm going to get four minus r squared, r dr d theta. And all I need to do now is just go and integrate. Shall we? Yes, we shall. You notice that this is way easier to do in polar than it would be in, um, in rectangular. So this ends up being 4r, 4r squared over 2 minus r to the fourth over 4 evaluated from 0 to 2 cosine theta. All that, d theta. This ends up equaling the integral from 0 to pi. And this is going to be 4 cosine squared theta or 2 cosine squared theta minus 16 over 4, so 4 cosine to the fourth theta, d theta. And you know what? I will allow you to integrate that yourself. You can go in and uh, go in and integrate that. Um, and again, we're just going to use that. Uh, we're going to use the standard substitution: cosine squared theta equals one half minus uh, plus one half cosine two theta. All right. So just as a hint, as you're going through and integrating, notice that to find this volume, what did I have to do? I had to go in. And I had to, in fact, um, I had to change both z. I had to change my my paraboloid into cylindrical, okay. And I had to change my um, my circular region into polar, all right. Did both of those? Gave me my bounds or my region d, okay. And then I could just plug in f of r theta. And you will note, right? This is a much simpler job to do in polar than it would be in cylindrical. So this finishes up for us um, working in uh, double rectangles over polar regions. Um, for our purposes, I, basically, you really want to think about these a lot very similarly to working in just double integrals in rectangular. The difference is that we're going to change over to polar, and we're going to recognize when it really does make a difference to actually write um, or to work in polar rather than working in rectangular. For circular regions, anything that actually has like any kind of like smoothness to it, you really are going to want to work in, um, in, in, in polar, like any kind of cylindrical, uh, circular regions. Anything that's squared terms for x and y, ask yourself, can I change this to polar? And it'll make this kind of integration way easier. Trust me, one of the big things that you want to do in doing kind of any kind of double integration, triple integration, where things are just kind of tedious sometimes, is see if you can be clever in order to make all the integration easier. All right, that finishes it up.